Hi everyone, my name is Martijn van den Ende, and in the next couple of minutes I will explain how to turn these wiggles into detections of cars and other vehicles. Let me begin by saying that fiber optic sensing is an emerging technology that uses fiber optic cables to make measurements of mechanical vibrations and also of temperature variations. As a subcategory of fiber optic sensing, distributed acoustic sensing, or DAS for short, measures stretching and contraction of glass fiber at specific locations over distances of up to tens of kilometers. This means that we can turn a fiber optic cable into an array of sensors which collects independent measurements of strain every few meters. Now, measuring stretching of the fiber may not sound very interesting at first, but there are lots of things out there that generate vibrations and strain. DAS is already being used to measure fluid flows, which is useful to detect leaks in water, oil or gas pipelines. But you can also measure the gentle swaying and resonance of tall structures like windmills and buildings or bridges. Natural sources of vibration include earthquakes, landslide, rockfalls and avalanches. But we also generate tons of seismic vibrations ourselves, with our cars, train, boats and even with our own feet. And that has been used to measure sounds produced by large marine mammals like whales and even small insects like weevils eating the bark of trees. And since fiber optic cables are highly resistant, flexible and require no electrical current, you can deploy your cables almost anywhere. Some examples here show cables laid out on glaciers, wrapped around trees and even deployed offshore. And what is very interesting for smart city applications is the fact that we can use existing telecommunication cables, the so-called dark fibers. Our cities, rural areas and even our oceans are full of telecom cables. And with that, we have the potential to tap into them to make dense measurements along these cables. But before going into our specific application, let's first have a look at how DAS works. And the main principle behind fiber optic sensing is nicely illustrated by this photograph, which shows a laser on the left, shining coherent lights straight into a plastic rod. The light then bounces around inside the rod and exits the rod on the right. Now the reason we can even see the light bouncing around in the first place is because there exist numerous nanometer scale defects inside the glass, or in this case plastic. When a photon hits such a defect, it gets re-emitted in a random direction. Some of those scattered photons will be sent in the direction of your eyes, so you can see them, while others are sent backwards in the direction from which they came. And with a sensitive detector, we can measure these backscattered photons. When we measure the light intensity or phase that comes back after sending in a pulse of light, we obtain a certain fingerprint as a function of time, which we can convert into distance along the fiber using the speed of light in glass. Under static conditions, this fingerprint is fixed. When we send in another pulse of light, we will make the same measurement again and again. But when the fiber stretches or shrinks, the response to a light pulse changes a little bit, from which we can infer how much the fiber is being stretched at which location. A highly simplified analogy would be that of an acoustic echo that we get when we shout down a water well. By carefully analyzing the timing of the echo after each shout, you could infer how much the water level is changing inside the well. So in a way, that analyzes the optical echoes coming from a fiber optic cable. Now that we know how a DAS measurement is made, Let's consider a specific application, namely that of traffic monitoring. For this, we looked at the data measured along a commercial telecom cable that was deployed parallel to a main road in the city of Toulon in France. The spacing of each measurement was 10 meters and the data were sampled in time at 250 Hertz. After some basic pre-processing, we could clearly see the deformation induced by the cars that were traveling along this road. On the right here we see an example of one minute of data, during which we recorded one car going in one direction and two cars traveling in the other direction. And for clarity I mark these with orange lines. The slope of these traces is inversely proportional to the velocity of each car. So we can use DAS to detect cars and subsequently estimate their velocity. This example of course shows an ideal case in which all the cars are clearly visible and separated in time. 
In reality, we are often faced with challenging scenarios such as trains of closely trailing cars, cars traveling in opposite directions of which the traces intersect, and various sources of coherent and incoherent noise. Now, since we identify cars as coherent waveforms propagating at a constant speed, and since DAS is essentially an array of sensors, we can tackle this challenge with beamforming analysis. And the main contribution of our paper is that we propose two beamforming models. For the first model, consider a DAS measurement of a car traveling with constant velocity v. The measurement at sensor q is some characteristic signal that is translated in time according to the velocity of the car plus some noise. When we take the Fourier transform of this measurement, this time shift becomes more explicit as a phase shift. We can then define a steering vector for a set of sensors, q equals 0, 1, 2, etc., as a function of the velocity of the car. Likewise, we define the signal vector as the collection of measurements at q equals 0, 1, 2, etc. Lastly, the covariance matrix is estimated as the expectation value over the frequencies of the cross-correlation of the measurements. With these definitions of the covariance matrix and steering vectors, we can perform music beamforming over a grid of velocities and for a sliding time window over which the Fourier transformations are computed. But note that with these definitions, the covariance matrix is not a function of frequency, while the steering vectors are. To resolve this, we compute the covariance matrix only over a narrow frequency band with central frequency k bar and define the steering vectors only at k bar. This is of course not ideal, and so we propose a second model that addresses this issue. For model number two, we have a very similar signal model, except that the signal of the car is not translated in time, but translated in space. And since the DAS measurement has two dimensions, one in time, one in space, we can compute the Fourier transform along the spatial dimension instead of the temporal one. Given a specific wave number k and some time window l, we can define a signal vector as l time consecutive Fourier transforms, so one at time n, one at time n plus one, up to time n plus l. The corresponding steering vector looks similar to what we defined previously, but now the covariance matrix is estimated not as the expectation value over the frequencies, but as the expectation value over time at a given wave number. In this way, both the steering vectors and the covariance matrix are a function of wave number, and so we can perform music beamforming without the restrictive narrowband approximations. To see how our two models perform, we took 500 seconds worth of DAS data, which recorded three cars going in one direction and eight cars traveling in the other direction. We performed the beamforming within a sliding time window over a grid of velocities. And so for each combination of time and velocity, we have an estimation of the beam power. Note that in this figure, I only show the absolute value of velocity, but the analysis is done on the signed velocity, so we can separately distinguish cars going in either direction, corresponding with positive or negative velocities. We can then run a basic peak detection algorithm to extract individual detections from the distribution of beam power. In this figure, downward pointing triangles correspond with detections for one direction, and upward pointing triangles correspond with detections going in the other direction. And to guide your eye, I've added some orange lines to indicate where the cars are in the DAS data. Now looking first at model number one, we can see that it does a reasonable job in detecting cars going in both directions, although it missed two cars and re reports one false positive. The velocities that we estimate are quite consistent near the speed limit of 50 km per hour, and the resolution in time and in velocity is quite good, since the triangles marking each detection are almost as big as the beam power peak. Looking at model, num model number two, we see a lot of missed detections and a spread in beam power that is much larger than for model number one. However, compared to model number one, the peaks seem much more robust, and we don't see the spurious little peaks in beam power like we can see for model one. We can see this a bit better if we compute a profile of beam power versus time, as shown on the figure on the right. The top panel shows the beam power for both models for the forward direction, 
and the bottom panel shows it for the backwards direction. Clearly, model number one, indicated by the blue line, has better sensitivity but also more noise, whereas model number two, the orange line, exhibits peaks in beam power that stand out better from the background. In the forward direction, these model number two peaks are very small and below the detection threshold, hence the absence of detections in this direction. Let's now consider some perspectives for the role of DAS in traffic analysis applications. Currently, pneumatic tubes and traffic cameras are commonly used to gather traffic data. These measurements are very precise, but they are made at a point in space. DAS, on the other hand, is distributed, which facilitates long-distance tracking of individual vehicles. This could be of interest for transient and short-term speed variations that could ultimately lead to traffic jams. These behavioral observations could not be made with point-wise measurements, which only give the average speed in between two measurement points. Also, DAS is inherently anonymous as opposed to traffic cameras. This makes it easier for researchers to perform field experiments, as currently no city permits are needed, nor would they have to deal with privacy concerns. And lastly, the signal amplitude is proportional to the weight of the vehicle. So a calibrated DAS system can be used as a continuous and on-demand weighing station for lorries. A strong requirement for traffic applications in general is that the DAS cable be properly coupled with the ground in order to measure the deformation induced by cars. In our study, the cable was not very strongly coupled. And so the car signals exhibit relatively poor signal-to-noise ratio. Especially in the traffic direction that is farthest from the cable, the signals are relatively weak. To address this, one could consider embedding the fibers directly into the roadbed, as is shown in the figure on the right from an experiment conducted by Peter Hubbard and co-workers. This is of course not feasible with commercial telecom cables, which need to be accessible for maintenance. Nonetheless, the beamforming methods proposed in our paper would likely benefit from clearer car signals and improved waveform coherence, and so it would pay off to identify sections of the cable that exhibit good coupling, for instance in segments that are trenched. So to sum up, distributed acoustic sensing has a lot of potential for numerous scientific and engineering applications. To analyze it as data efficiently, we can leverage its array characteristics and perform beamforming analysis. For the application shown in our paper, we propose two beamforming models for the detection and characterization of cars in the DAS data, each with different detection characteristics and resolution. In the future, we will analyze in more detail why the performance characteristics of the models are different and what is needed to get the best of both worlds. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.